Hi everyone, I'm here today with Fran Chatterday um, and we're going to learn a bit about Fran and about her career. So the first question, uh, if you have to sum up your research, what is the one big question you're trying to answer? Okay, so there's two ways I could go with this. The, the particle that I work on is called an axion and it's a particle that is predicted by string theory, which is probably the leading theory that combines both quantum mechanics and gravity. And it's also a particle that could be the, the dark matter that we know makes up 85% of the matter in the universe. So one of the, the goals of my research is just to try to work out if axioms exist or not. I think there's also uh, a kind of more fundamental goal, which is to use astrophysics and telescope observations to try and find out about particle physics. And this might sound a little bit odd because it's using things that are, are really, really big, like stars and galaxies, to try to study things that are unobservably small, like fundamental particles. But Actually, because astrophysical systems are often very, very high energy, for example, they're very hot or they're very large, um, this can allow us to study particle physics processes that would actually never be able to study using an experiment we could build on Earth. So astrophysics can be a really, really powerful tool to study particle physics. And it's that power that I'm really trying to harness in my research. That's really interesting. So what does a typical day look like for you? Well, it's, um, it's become a bit different since the start of the pandemic, I think. There's a lot more, you know, short walks and that kind of thing. Um, but usually I am either coding, um, programming, so trying to write a computer program to, to figure out the effect of axions on some astrophysical system, like on, on the light coming from a galaxy cluster, for example. I also spend a lot of time reading papers, so reading papers within both astrophysics and particle physics, either to kind of try to come up with new ideas and think about big picture questions, or often to um, try and find out kind of detailed things about exactly how to do a particular calculation or, you know, exactly what some, some figure is that I need. So what's exactly the energy resolution of this telescope? So there's a lot of uh, worrying about details and technicalities as well. So do you ever use the, the telescopes directly or are you, um analyzing someone else's data from the telescope? Um, so far, I've only been analyzing someone else's data. Um, the telescopes that I work with are X-ray telescopes, which means they have to be in space because the atmosphere is opaque to X-rays. So even if I were to apply for observation time on the telescope, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be in charge of pointing the telescope in the right place, which is a very good thing. Um, but because, um, for example, the Chandra X-ray telescope, which I've used the data from, is funded by NASA. And that means that all of the data is actually open access. So there's software to analyze it. And actually, anyone can just go on the website, download the software, and do science with the data. That's fascinating. So you're not going to be going on any trips out to, to exciting places to use a telescope? No, no unfortunately not. There wouldn't be uh, no justification for that. Um, and particularly, of course, with x-rays, you know, you can, you can actually use it from anywhere. There's no need to go to somewhere with clear skies. Why, uh, what made you decide to become a physicist? So I don't really remember. I know that I've wanted to be a physicist for a very long time. My earliest memory of wanting to be a physicist was in primary school. Um, it was in year five or six, so that's age 10 or 11. And we all had to do a, a project on 
like a, a topic of our choice. And it was quite an advanced thing. I think we spent like a couple of months doing this project, which, you know, when you're 10 is a really, really long time. Um, and I chose physics, like just physics in general. And I remember at that time knowing that that's what I wanted to do. But I, to be honest, don't have a really good memory of where it came from. Um, my kind of earliest memory was I wanted to be a singer, which wasn't a, a plausible career option for me. Um, and then, yeah, at some point it switched to physicist. That's really interesting. So you haven't managed to combine singing and physics yet? No, um, unfortunately, I'm very bad at singing. <laughs> so that never really got off the ground. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Do you have a favorite physics fact? Yes. Um, so I, I did think a bit about this question beforehand and it's very hard to choose just one. So mine's a bit of a cop out. Um, the thing that I've always found really cool about physics is that the the same laws of physics kind of lead to everything. Um, so in particle physics, one thing we're trying to do is, is work out what the most fundamental laws of physics are. And of course, we don't know what they are yet. We're very much not done. But we do think that they are can be expressed by equations that you can basically write down on you know, one piece of paper. Um, and and yet, obviously, we can see that they lead to not just the things you think of as physics-y, like, you know, stars and galaxies and stuff, but everything we see in our, in our everyday experience. Like, you know, just like everyday objects, furniture, stones, that kind of thing. Um, and furthermore, we, of course, know that they underpin... Um, biology and life and all of that kind of stuff and it's just quite cool that you know apparently we can get from those equations on a piece of paper to all of these like really different behaviors and no one understands quite how that process works of course that's why science is still very much an ongoing topic um, but it, it seems to and yeah, I think it's just cool that they appear to be so simple. Yes, yeah, that's definitely fascinating how yeah. simple these equations are. Um, so what physics discovery do you most hope to see in your lifetime? Um, I would really like to know the identity of dark matter. This is um, quite uh, an obvious answer for someone in my position, um, but you know, we know that 85% of the matter in the universe, we don't know what type of particle it is. And I would really like to know what it is. Obviously, I would love for it to be the axion, which is what I work on. But even if it isn't, I think just knowing that would, would potentially unlock a kind of whole new era of physics and would really drastically improve our understanding of the universe. Yeah, I think that's that's a, a very common answer is <laughs> when, the, when it's 85% of the mass in the universe, we kind of want to know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so when you're not doing physics, what do you do? What do you do outside work? Um, so pre-pandemic, I did stand up comedy which has been very fun. It's obviously something that is in some ways totally different to physics, but in other ways, very similar. Um, so I, I did comedy about physics and hopefully we'll, we'll do again one day, <laughs> um, you know, maybe when things are a bit more open. Um, but, you know, actually in some ways the process of stand up and the process of physics was quite similar 
Um, I find physics to be a very creative process and both, both comedy and physics are also endeavors that reward asking stupid questions. No such thing as a stupid question in science. <laughs> yeah, exactly.